Hello, I am your new favorite JJ Caballero, joined by the lovely Goins, Casey Goins. And this is Mano Stereo Video, a podcast about movie music. I'm a songwriter, producer, DJ, while Casey is an amazing hairstylist and salon owner. And we love movies, and this is the perfect excuse to talk about music and movies. How's it going, love? Good. Casey is under construction right now. I'm under construction. Deep Cuts is under construction right now. It's been very... It's been busy. It's been sweaty. I've been moving all the things. Yeah. Um, it's going. I just, I'm feeling about it. I guess how you feel when I'm like wanting to talk about going on vacation or going yeah. whatever. And you're like, nope. Bup, bup. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'll, like once I can get in the other room. Yeah. yeah. And I want to be able to turn on the faucets and do all the, you know what I mean? Like I'm just, <clears throat> She's I have it. all the nerves. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited for what's to come. Yeah. That's, yes. Yeah. There's changes to come. We'll update you as those changes happen. Uh, but Casey's been busy doing that for sure. Mm-hmm. And I've been d- busy doing other little things too. I hope I hope I'm helping you in some respect or whatever. Um, but we're here today. We are here today at this episode on this show. Mono Stereo Video. <laughs> To talk about uh, a new movie and like a new kind of like set of things we're doing. It's it's like we're like right. right I said we're not doing like we're doing this this uh, composers this shit or this like we're not trying to limit ourselves in that way. We're having a little fun with it. The movies that we're doing for the next few weeks are all movies with like fictional bands. Some of them and then some like real band, real music, like it like but but mainly like fictional band type things. Movies um, about music. Movies about movies music about and musicians essentially. Mm-hmm. And most of the the ones that we've chosen have soundtracks that are like this is this band's music and things like that. So that's 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 what we're uh, and today's is kind of like loose on that, but it's kind of it's 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 co- it's a cover album. Uh, we're talking about Velvet Goldmine today. Todd Haynes, nineteen ninety eight, uh, amazing movie. Mm-hmm. Casey's favorite. This is my favorite. This movie. is Casey's favorite movie. Mm-hmm. This is Casey's favorite movie. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I guess that's why I was super concerned about how, like, if you're too tired or anything, because it's like your favorite movie, and I want to. No, just, I mean I can talk about the movie. That's, I wanted. I want to do it justice. I've seen it a bajillion times. It's an awesome movie, and we love it. Um, up front, also, well, up front, real quick. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Thank you very much for your responses to previous episodes. Uh, I would start. If you're new here, I would after this maybe I'd start with uh, the Grandes Éxitos because that's a little <laughs> bit. Those are some snippets of some previous episodes that kind of give the gist of what the show is about. Uh, other favorites are our Romeo and Juliet episode that's super popular. The Twilight, any of the Twilight episodes, but namely Part One and Breaking Dawn Part Two. Hmm. Those two soundtrack episodes are super popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, the beach is slowly picking up momentum. That one, that one came out a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the beach episode. Uh, thanks to Adrian for that suggestion. Uh, I also want to mention. Uh, I know my friend Fabian listens to this. You still haven't reached out to me about what soundtrack we should do, and I know you probably have a good idea of something cool that we could be able to that we'd be able to do. So, Fabian, calling you out on this episode right now. <laughs> but yeah, th- so now in the land of Todd Haynes, Velvet Goldmine, a glam rock, like, uh, f- pseudo, like it's a fake biopic on like a fictional version of like David Bowie and and Iggy Pop mm-hmm. and Brian Eno Brian and Eno like, who else uh, I mean anybody anybody involved with the like glam the scene pop glam rock mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all the all the glam rock stuff <laughs> late 70s early 80s yeah it's a way to address uh, gay issues it's a very like very very much up top here also mm-hmm. um, very 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 gay movie super gay very gay and, you know, this might be one of those episodes where if, you know, that those types of uh, issues and if they bother you, if you're not comfortable with that stuff, um, this get is where we say, get the fuck here. out, <laughs> pussy, get the fuck out, pussy, get comfortable in your sexuality, bitch. <laughs> 
fucking <laughs> I'm glad we we're on the same wave as that. I was like I was <laughs> <laughs> I was um, like, we ain't got time for that. No, no, we ain't <clears throat> got time movie. for that. You're missing out. It's a fucking awesome movie. It's super gay and super hot. <laughs> That's what's fucking. It, it's gonna make you horny. It's a super <laughs> horny movie, and we love it. Like it's it's awesome. It's awesome. So if you're not down with that, if you're not down with gay shit, why are you listening to us? Yeah. Why are you listening to us for real? Honestly. <laughs> um, anyway, Velvet Goldmine, Todd Haynes, starring. Well, we'll. I guess we'll get to the cast list, but yeah, but hold on, it. hold on. I wanted to ask you, like, just your history with this. This is a very special movie for Casey. This is, like, <laughs> it's so many things in her life, and, like, it's so many... How can I say it? Like, when I knew she'd seen this movie, too, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, shit, I thought I was the only one that ever that ever seen that. I didn't even know what it was called for the longest time. You just and knew you saw it. I saw it on IFC, and then I'd, <laughs> I'd seen it pop up. Like, it was, like, on a, it was on Hulu for a while. It was on Netflix really? for a while. Yeah, yeah. They, oh. It was on Netflix and Hulu for a while. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Velvet Goldmine. So what's, what's your, like, that's my history. I was just, I caught it on IFC one time. So... I don't, I mean, I didn't see it when it came out because, I mean, I'm sure they didn't show it here necessarily. I saw mm, it when okay. it was on video already. Yes. Um, About what age would you say? <clears throat> what what year is? I mean, it came out when I was 13, but I want to say maybe I saw it when I was 15. Okay. Yeah, 14, 15, okay, cool. something like that. Cool. But yeah, I remember, of course, it was another movie that Renee... Um, uh-huh. had told us about so we. I remember watching it at her house I think we were I'm pretty sure we were at her house and we watched it and of course we had popcorn and all the snacks and whatever and I just thought it was such a cool movie because I love um, it's a musical it's a uh-huh. music video and I, I love movies that have music in it like where the music is a character in the movie Yes, and I just love that this one was so colorful and like the outfits and the hair like, just color everywhere. Bell bottoms, everywhere. platform shoes. Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't matter. Long hair, short hair. Like, you what'd know you what think I mean? What do you think of Brian Slade's hair? Like, that little Karen haircut. Um, The blue? No, I, I'm saying, like, the little like the little bangs with the, like, you know, the, the one that he has mainly. Um, his main haircut. I think it's very, I think it's a little Karen. To me. To me. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I know, like, back then, like, that was yeah, popular, where yeah. it was, like, really short, like, and, like, the, the all the edge was I guess longer. I, just, I guess I just don't like um, the shape of his head, personally. Yeah. He has a long, he has an oval-shaped face. Yeah. 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 I, I get, get what like, you mean. That, that particular... It didn't suit him. That particular haircut didn't mm-hmm. suit him. Yeah. Well enough. Everything else was, like, you know, I get, like, of course, like, like Bowie hair and such mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I just loved, I loved everything about it. Awesome. And I remember she made me a, I think that one, did I have this one on cassette or on, this one might have been on a cassette. Yes. Cool. Pretty sure. And then um, cool. she would always decorate, even if they were like whatever basic like cassette tapes, she would always have different color gel pens and oh, write yeah. all the songs in a different color and put little cutesy like smiley faces and stars and hearts and stuff all over. I fucking love that shit. Yeah, that's cool. Um what else? And then of course this is when I was like buying and making all my own clothes and stuff and cool. I would buy those packs of white t shirts where it come like three T shirts in a pack. Yeah. And my mom would buy us the iron-on paper, and Hell she yeah. would let us use the printer for ink. And we would just iron. And I remember I made, like, the logo to the movie, different stills from the movie, like, iron them on different shirts. Like, that was my shit. I wore that shit. You're so cool. <laughs> I wish I still had some of that stuff. You're so <laughs> 90s indie. You're, like, you're you're not a Gen Xer. You're a millennial. Like you're at the tail beginning of millennialism. I can't keep track of what's what. Well, that's or what you're at. We and- are we are right there at like the ten, the tail beginning of, or like the tail end of, like beginning of millennial, mm-hmm. and then it ends up like Gen Z right after us and stuff. Okay. So, but like your total like 
90s indie indie oh i got a mixtape mm-hmm. and i have to, i saw this this it was and, so cool yeah and it's very obscure like it's mm-hmm. not it's not the most i loved knowing about something that nobody else knew right. or cared yeah. about yeah I loved that's it. why i liked that's why i liked ifc that's mm-hmm. that's i mean you know yeah. me i'm fucking pretentious and shit and mm-hmm. i like to be like oh you never saw this movie <laughs> like i like to be the i had, i was the first person to see donnie darko of mm-hmm. all my friends and i was like Oh, you guys telling everybody seen that? you need to see this oh, movie. Oh, you need to see this movie. It's like Donnie Darko. Oh my god. Like this Hedwig too. Hedwig, mm-hmm. I was like when I bought it, I was like nobody knows what the fuck this movie is. Mm-hmm. Like I fucking love this movie. Yeah. We're talking about that movie next week. No. Next week, yeah. We're yeah. talking about that movie next week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Josie and the Pussycats after that. Okay. Yeah, we'll do Josie. Wow, that like just because I haven't seen Josie and the Me Pussycats neither. yet, and I know nothing it. really about it. I mean, I've, I know of it, and I know who's in what we're going to watch and all that stuff. But since, like, this is my favorite movie, and then Hedwig is pretty fucking high up there, uh-huh. like, that took a swan dive <laughs> right now when you said, and Josie and the Pussycats, I was like, oh. I just want to get it out of the way. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I get way. it. It'll I be fun. Out, yeah. I'm excited to watch it, too. It's whatever. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to be, like, oh, I, one of those, like, cutesy whatever it's gonna movies. It's going to be camp. It's going to yeah. be fucking camp as fuck. I like, hope this it is doesn't camp annoy me, right now. but I'll tell you if it does. <laughs> I mean, it's because the, the, the cast is stacked. I mean, No, it's, I get I, it. I mean, I know it's like Tara Reid and like fucking, but it's got Rosario Dawson. It's got that no, Rachel No, I know. Lee it's Cooks, just, I don't know if Parker it's on that, on that like edge of being like, mm. I've never you seen know it. what I mean? Top yeah. 40s movie. It was not something I remember I hearing out. about it. I yeah. remember it being like a bigger deal movie yeah. just because it was like, what's her face? And she had just did, she saw that and yeah, it yeah, was yeah. that, you know what I mean? It was that rom-com phase. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so. for me, it's it, it wasn't, like, on my radar. I was like, Yossi and the Pussycats, what? <laughs> uh, that's fucking lame. That's gay. Oh, that's for girls. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've recently read things and, like, seen little, like, it's mm-hmm. it's been, it's starting to be reclaimed. Okay. Like, the soundtrack or something. I, I don't know. I don't All know. Right. Might be just I'm campy. Like, well, we're talking about Velvet Goldmine right now. Right now, we're talking about Velvet Goldmine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's kind. Of, yeah, my my thing with that was it was a movie I didn't know the name of for a while. Mm-hmm. Mo- 90s like movies like this that are they're collages, right? Like mm-hmm. like how how uh, Natural Born Killers was that mm-hmm. we've done. Um, what else have, have we done? Anything else that's kind of more collagey on this show? I don't think so. Like a collage as far as the soundtrack Like that. Goes? Like, or more like, like, everything's kind of everywhere. It's like, there's a, there's a through story. There's a through line. Mm-hmm. But we get, we're going to flashes up here. We're going forward mm-hmm. in time. We're going oh, backward in time. You know what I mean? That's a lot of the yeah. movies we watch. We want, I mean, we watch a lot of those. <clears throat> I don't know if we've talked about many of them on the podcast. I think, I think I mean, the closest like, one, Natural Born Killers, probably. Um, Lost Highway was kind of like that and... Yeah, Lost Highway kind of was like a. It was that. What was it called? Mobius Strip. Mm. Yeah, Mobius Strip. That's yeah. what. It, yeah. So, but I'm. So this one caught me off guard in that it was like I was like, wait, is this? Are those real music? Who's is that a real song? Is that who's that guy? Is he real? And mm-hmm. you know, like, wait, isn't that Hugh McGregor? Like, hold, you know, like it's. The cognitive, the dissonance to that, like, I had to kind of grow into, like, oh, that's what Mm -hmm. this movie is. That's how it's telling the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I liked it. I liked it. And it's because I already knew, I mean, I already knew who you and McGregor was, and I had seen a bunch of his movies. Um, Jonathan Rhys Meyers, the same. Like, I had seen, like, like, this, after I saw this, I watched a bunch of his movies. Uh I already knew who Tony Collette was. Yeah. Um, because Muriel. of Miriam, Muriel's <laughs> wedding. We gotta do that one too. All ABBA, huh? Mm hmm. I mean, we should, because yeah. it's an awesome movie. It is. Yeah, we'll put, we'll put um, Muriel's wedding on the, on the list. What else? But you even just terrible. the cover, even just the seeing the cover of the video, it's yes. so colorful. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a pretty cover. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, it's like a billboard. It's got it, yeah. It's got but, all the yeah. Let's go through the cast because I already shouted them all out. I, I mean, think. yeah, like the, the, the <laughs> of course. It's so it's a Todd Haynes movie, and I was looking for articles on like maybe he did talked about the making of it or maybe, but uh-huh. essential n- not much. But it's just essentially you know the the big thing people talk about is like the super indie uh, super groups that he collected to make the bands that made the music of this mm-hmm. to cover the music because uh, what were you. You had a thing that David Bowie said. So, 
Yes. It's loosely based on glam rock and kind of like an homage to it. And it's somewhat of a, it's kind of a documentary style movie, but mm-hmm. then there's storyline to it where we went and we'll get to our characters right now. But, but David Bowie um, didn't license, he didn't necessarily want to license his music. And he said, he said of the movie. Yeah. He said, when I saw the film, I thought the best thing about it was the gay scenes. They were the only <laughs> successful part of the film, frankly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was, he wasn't, uh, I mean, I guess he wasn't just interested. He wasn't interested in participating in it, but other people were were like a you know member of the stooges was and all these indie rockers mm-hmm. were and a little man uh, named tom york <laughs> a little man <laughs> let's see the cut co- the cost the cost list so todd haynes directed it ewan mcgregor played kurt wilde he's first build like he's he's the top I think because at the point, yeah, when this was made, it was he was like the the top. Yeah, yeah, he was like the most famous person. I would think. I was looking at the timeline, so it was like boom, train spotting. Oh shit, Mm -hmm. you know, like he had just hit his peak after like shallow graves, train spotting. A life less ordinary didn't hit. No, that one was a bomb. It was a bomb, and then this one was even more of a bomb. Mm -hmm. Like that, that much more of a bomb. So it's like damn, that sucks because I've seen all of like I I have both. I have all those those movies. movies. Yeah, those movies are (laughs) hot. Yeah, you and McGregor, we've talked about him before about train spotting. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, episode one through three of Star Wars. He's also, oh yeah, he was in Birds of Prey. That's right. See, and that's so funny that, of course, anybody you ask now, they're like, oh, Obi Wan. Like, that's you and McGregor. But that's not you and McGregor for me. You and McGregor's like a fucking heroin addict. He's a fucking, like, you know what I mean? Like, Shallow Grave is an awesome movie. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever see Beginners? It was him and oh, what's that fucking dude's name? Uh, Christopher Plummer, and Christopher Plummer is out um. like he's he comes out. Well, it's like him. He comes out later in life, and it's about like 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 he, he comes out. Yeah, he's, okay. he's gay, mm-hmm. and then Ewan McGregor's trying to like deal with that, knowing about his family. Like, it's it's like a but it's a good movie. He's his father. Yeah, he's his father. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have I seen that? Beginners. Let me see. What else did he pop up in? Oh yeah, did you ever, you seen Down with Love? Right? Yeah. Yeah, Down with Love. Mm-hmm. We watched that in North Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Men who stare at goats. That's right. We just watched that. What was his? What was his? I mean, he fucking sings on this shit. Mm-hmm. It's fucking sick. He he plays the the analog to Iggy Pop in the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it tells basically the love story of I get a love story a love story that is like uh, you know alleged between David Bowie and Iggy Pop. I don't even want to say alleged. Maybe just like a fictionalized you know version yeah, it's of what kind of like be. a legend at this yeah, point. It's a legend. It's mm-hmm. a legend. I mean, uh, only they would know and such. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Who knows? But Iggy Pop. We right. saw him, mm-hmm. Cruel World, for five songs. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. You fucking, you, we saw TBI. Mm-hmm. We saw him do TBI. That's all. That's all that matters. Ewan McGregor. I can talk about Ewan McGregor all day. He rocks. Jonathan Reese Myers, Brian Slade. Jonathan Reese Myers. What is? Was this the first thing that you saw him in? Yes, I believe okay. so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, my favorite. Jonathan, well, I mean, besides this one, mm-hmm. Mission Impossible 3. He is a member of the crew. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> he's, so he's a member funny. of Ethan Hunt's crew. I totally crew. didn't even remember yeah. that. <laughs> he's a member of Ethan Hunt's crew. Let's see. Match Point, did you ever see that? Mm-hmm. I never saw that. It's with Scarlett Johansson. With Scarlett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Scarlett I've been wanting to watch it again. I'm going to watch it. That's on Some there. Some Scar Joe. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. I mean, I'll get over the Woody Allen of it all. Like, fuck him, but... I know. Yeah, but whatever. We won't even think about it like that. We'll think of it, of it like a Scar Joe movie. Can I say a little something just to Go get the point off of Spinchy? Yeah. We got a delivery. Guess what it is? What? Long legs, the t-shirt. Oh, the t-shirt. Yeah, I'm excited Long for that. Long legs. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm excited. Uh, what's it? Fright rags? 
Fright Rags. Fright Rags. Fucking love they Fright Rags. They don't sponsor. Shout out to Fright Rags. Shout out to Fright Rags. I love Rags. Fright Rags. We fucking love you. I, we've gotten a lot of shirts from yeah. Fright Rags. We've gotten Joe Bob's shirts. Joe Bob's we've shirts. gotten Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that um, was a Fright Rags. Huh? Yeah. That easy all of those one. are Fright Rags. Cool. I keep debating on su- uh, subscribing to their like. You get a, every quarter. You get a like magazine and oh, like cool. stuff. And I'm like, oh, I want to do it, but huh. seems a little frivolous. I'm totally gonna <laughs> fucking clip this out and be like, hey, Fright Rags, you know blah 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 we have a podcast of, you know I'll post it and I'll tag them okay yeah. fright rags fright rags I really do like fright rags oh yeah thing. it's cool shit it's yeah, really cool stuff the quality of the shirt mm-hmm. like they're soft that Joe Bob shirt's they're awesome durable. those Joe Bob shirts are awesome yeah the print hasn't mm-hmm. faded Nothing. or anything yep. and even at that if, if it fades it's gonna get like that cool yeah it looks fade. cooler yeah. cause it's like they're comic they look like comic book sheets they look like comic books mm-hmm. 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 alright that's enough but yeah so Jonathan Reese Myers <laughs> uh, he, I was also reading there's some he's got uh, he's got a bit of a drinking problem. He's got a bit of a. Uh, oh really? Yeah. I mean, he. Nah. Well, it's pretty bad. Is he like a uh, like? Is he like abusive? Like, what did you read? I read that he was like like on a plane. He was like yelling racial slurs eee, and drunk racial and slurs? shit. No. I like I get it when people get angry, like mm-hmm. when they had alcohol. Because I would get angry. Uh-huh. I was an See? angry yeah. drunk sometimes. Yeah. So. You I know. get it, but you don't. There are no racial mm, slurs. Uh, like that makes mm, that makes me like him a little less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not. It's we'll something see. we read. Alleged. Yeah, we'll read the we'll read the articles. I hope it's not. We'll read the articles. Um, but yeah, then he was. Uh, I get a lot of people would probably know him from the Tudors. That was oh, like a yeah. big. Uh huh. Yeah. I had to have been wanting to watch it. I never saw that. My mom surprisingly she she was like going on a TV binge when she finally got I was watching the HBO. Tudors. Oh, okay. Uh huh. And she did finish it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tony Collette. Tony Collette Galaf- Galafasi. That's her full name. Tony Collette Galafasi. Always? Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, Australian actress. We've talked about her before, I think. Mm-hmm. I think we've talked about her before on this. What the yeah. fuck? What? Fucking, What's happening? There's like a little gnat. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. I think it's landed on your shirt right here. Go like this. No, I think okay, no. All right, cut that out, Javi. <laughs> She's one of our favorites, Tony Collette Muriel. She oh, she was in the hours. Yeah, what was she in the hours? I don't remember. I need to watch the hours again. I need I've to been wanting to watch it again. I've been wanting She's, to watch it again. I think she plays the neighbor. She's one. She's a okay. friend of one of. She's a friend. Okay, Hereditary is our favorite uh, of hers. Yes. Like it, I just love awesome. all the after that movie came out, I just loved all of the memes that got created of like the hot pizza in the mouth, and it was like her, Natalie Portman's, or no, no, uh, Natalie, um, ah, Australian one too. Natalie Ambrulia? No, 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 no. <laughs> She's Australian. Or I'm thinking of a different. <laughs> um, I don't know why I keep thinking Natalie Portman. She's blonde. Another favorite of ours, Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive. Oh, she might not be a Natalie. Oh fuck! What's her? Ah, oh. that's why oh her, God, her name. name just jumped out of my brain. Why? Naomi Watts. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I wanted to talk about her now. Oh, the screaming faces with the hot pizza mouth. <laughs> That's what it's called, the hot pizza mouth? Well, it's just like a meme, and it would be all of them, like, where you could use all of their faces. Like, imagine all of their faces where they're, like, ah, in horror in all their movies, and it's just, like, when you eat a hot pocket, and it's just, like, too hot. That's silly. You haven't seen those? I don't think so. I'm going to send you one. She pops up in so many movies She's that we've so seen. Many. She She's so many. She's so very underrated. Krampus. Bel- Velvet Buzzsaw. Krampus. I, I I'm like, why up. is that your first? <laughs> that was a good, that was a funny movie. Krampus. <laughs> that show's funny. What else? Uh, Dinner with Friends. Jesus Henry Christ. I'm just going down her little. But she's awesome. She's one of our favorites. Uh, we love Tony Collette. Mm-hmm. Christian Bale as Arthur Stewart. He's like the eyes. Like we see the story happen through his eyes. Yeah, and like, he's like a reporter, and they ask him mm-hmm. to find out what happened to the singer that and hoaxed know, his own death, and like, like it. So I'm thinking, like, you know, when we go to like the music videos, like the performances that are happening and such. Mm-hmm. Like I'm wondering, like, 
could those be like also dream sequences that he's thinking of like the way for sure his, like he's picturing he's, he's remembering where he was when yeah. all these things like he remembers when that song came out like mm-hmm. he went and bought the record he remembers mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah but this is how I remember this is when I hear Christian Bale this is what I think of and I know a lot of people don't think of they think of American Psycho they think Batman, Batman. they think so many things but not this movie like yeah. yep yeah he was so young. He was. He was, yeah, and he's maybe also, not so young, but he was just he was like still green. I think acting. He was bit. also uh, <laughs> he was a child actor too, though, right? Wasn't he in one of like the another movie that you showed me like as a kid? I'm not sure. There's another movie that's one of your movies where he's a kid. I mean, we can Google it. Yeah, Google Google <laughs> that. And he wasn't in the Heavenly Creatures, right? No. No, he's not in that one, right? Mm-mm. I think, isn't he's not in that movie with all the fucking kids that get beat by all those fucking... No. No? <sighs> there was a movie that we've seen. You're thinking of Heaven Help Us and he's not in that Heaven one. Help Us. Oh my gosh, that movie, love. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, that movie. I can't believe that was like one of your guys' movies as kids. Mm-hmm. You guys watch some crazy. He movies. was in Little Women. That was another young yes, movie that he did. Yes, Little Women. I, That's I was, what you were thinking. I was of? thinking Little Women. He was yeah. younger. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking he was Little younger, Women. But yeah, that was. I know he wasn't a, a baby, but I know like he was a younger. He was a younger. He was a younger. He was a younger. Yes, but he's also Batman. He's also American Psycho, uh, and he's also. He, this is a, his coming of age tale. This is Arthur's coming of age tale. He's he's like finding himself he's coming out to himself in this world every like it's the whole everybody's gay everybody's bisexual everybody's this everybody does i feel like whatever. that's what's i mean i don't want to minimize i'm uh-huh. not trying to minimize i'm an ally i promise you i just want to get this thought out but i feel like that's how like back then like in the glam rock scene that's how it was like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so i feel like that's like that's what's happening again right now and that's why I just like I wish everybody would just stop being so nosy and stop labeling and who oh, cares yeah. like just yeah, who cares? do what who you cares? gotta do. Yeah, if you're not hurting anybody and nobody's hurting you. You do it. Uh, you know. You know, like ain't no such thing as straight, really. I don't think so. There's always a little bent so. to whatever the fuck. You yeah. know what I mean? There's always some sort of little yeah. bent that'll make you want to mm-hmm. think. You know, there's something. So yeah. like that's that's whatever. St- standards or whatever you know it's it's all useless it's mm-hmm. all useless it doesn't even it, that doesn't mean shit yeah it's you know? programming and it's all programming and if you're listening to this and this is making you angry and you've made it this far into this episode <laughs> what are you doing here how did you get here go away Bzz, go away <laughs> uh eddie Izard, but also Susie Izard. Susie eddie Izard. uh she goes by all she goes by Susie now Yes, I yeah, thought Susie. She, I didn't know still. So she, I think she'll okay. still be addressed by Eddie. Like, okay. like, I guess it's such a, like, it's a professional name now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it's a professional name. Um, at the time, Eddie Azard, Susie Azard, uh, is, what's, uh, Jerry Devine. Jerry she, Devine. She plays Jerry Devine, the, the big hotshot manager and mm-hmm. owner of, what's it, uh, Bijou Records. <laughs> um, and he's got the, what do you think about his, what do you think about her hair? Or Jerry Devine's hair? I mean, that's just the hair of that. I'm used yeah. to seeing that kind of hairdo because I... The chops. Yeah. Those are crazy. And then, like, all the layered hair, all the yeah. shags, all of, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Fast I mean, talking, fast wheeling, dealing. Mm-hmm, very, cigar smoking. Cigar smoking. And yeah. that's very Azard. That's a very, you know... Mm-hmm. Always, Stylish. So, yeah. wearing all the colorful suits. Yeah. And very Azard. Finding all the arti- artistic mm-hmm. piece people to... I know. Every... Like, all, all her... Uh, Every time she's in a thing, it's like it's like I, I like every time. I did you know. ever watch that series that she did no. with Minnie Driver? Wow, what was I that watched called? it for um, the riches. I yeah. think it was good. I saw it. Yeah, it was. It's I was have like the Pinocchio noses on the, the covers. Cover, right? yeah, yeah, it was actually really. They were just yeah. swindlers. They were swindlers, and mm. like it was, it was really good. I wouldn't mm. mind finding. I think it's on something. I think it's on Hulu because mm-hmm. I think that was an FX show. Yeah, because I love Minnie Driver too. Yeah, so. I want to. I want to see what's up with mm-hmm. Minnie. What? What up, Minnie? <laughs> oh, <laughs> she was recently in something. Super recently. <clears throat> I mean, she's been in television. She's been stuff in television and... stuff recently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but Jerry Devine. The there's another. Oh, I was reading an article. I'll, 
that also was kind of like an analog to Bowie's managers, okay. like people around Bowie, like. They these they were modeled. The characters were modeled after after okay, them too. Okay. Um, Todd Haynes also very like very tries to be very precise. Like mm-hmm. Todd Haynes very much like of uh, the class of like nineties indie where the movies look like documentaries, where they're period precise, where the costumes are you know what I mean things mm-hmm. like that. Um, he's famous for his his. Karen Carpenter tale. Karen Carpenter. Uh, it was called a, a superstar, mm-hmm. and and it was told. It was the Karen Carpenter story told uh, in Barbies. Okay, and it was just like Barbies, not even stop motion. I'm surprised was, that that didn't get brought up like during the whole Barbie craze, the Barbie movie craze. I think it did. Oh. I think in the movie itself there was something that I, I referenced it. There's something that uh, referenced. I watch it again, I, we need then. to watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we need to watch it, and, and then. Um, when we were watching the fucking when we went to see it at Alamo mm-hmm. in the at the beginning they did play oh, that okay. they did play like some of the stuff from okay, there okay. so they did do an homage to, to yeah. Todd Haynes yeah okay. yeah yeah that's like that was like a thing because it's a very it's a like I was like oh shit like you, you can do this with this type of thing like mm-hmm. it was very like whoa like Todd Haynes is amazing for that Shannon is played by Emily Wolf Emily Wolf was also in The Full Monty she was also she was Huh. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's where I recognize. I'm like, that's where she was from. That Michael Feast as Cecil. Cecil was the the man who the first man, the first man who who spotted him, the first manager. Um, like immediately in love, mm-hmm. like immediately, like oh my gosh, who mm-hmm. is he? Um, I like that actor too. He was he was cool. Like he's I don't know. It was it was a cool little introduction to to Brian Slade. Mm-hmm. Like it was like he had that. What's the like the the early Bowie look like the early long hair yeah, yeah, and the yeah. flowy like mm-hmm. dressy the gowns yeah the stuff. gowns um, the movie go also goes back and forth in narrators and narration and stuff mm-hmm. and it goes back and forth between voices like and time time and space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the the main female narrator is a, a woman by the name of Janet McTeer. Let's see. She was also in the menu. She was in Maleficent. She was in the Woman in Black. Uh, she was in those Divergent movies. Mm. She was in those. Um, oh, she was in Mission. Oh, she's going to be in Mission. the next Mission Impossible. I don't know if that's going to happen. If Dead Reckoning 2 is going to happen. I don't know. I think that's been marred. I know. That's a me thing. That's yeah, a I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, if it does, cool. If it doesn't, cool. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a me thing. Yeah. <laughs> But it's it goes back and forth in narration for but for, she's the first opening narrator and mm-hmm. it's like there's there's some uh, uh, Christian Bale speaking mm-hmm. things like that. Let me see. Um, yeah, Jack Ferry. Who's who's plays Jack Ferry? Let me. I'll edit that. Why doesn't it come up all early? Oh, it doesn't even say here. It doesn't? No. Mine does. Mickey Western Marlar. Mickey Western Marlar plays Mikko. Jack... F- huh? His name's Mikko... Mikko... Westmoreland. Westmoreland. Is he related to... Oh, check that out. <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> it's because when, like, when I saw him as a different haircut and like no makeup, and I was like, okay. oh, he did look like... Um, what's his face? I mean, it's just it's it's also a very varied cast. There's a ton of people in this mm-hmm. movie. There's tons of people. Uh, Todd Haynes did it's a big it's a big feat. Like I know. Okay, so so reading about it, it didn't get like. There's a lot of stuff that didn't work for people. I guess a lot of people kind of felt the way that Bowie did, but also yeah, you know, there's I, the homophobia too. So yeah. probably that too wasn't a thing for people. I remember. When it was listed on Netflix, uh-huh. it was like because I watched it, it started sending my algorithm to like a classic gay cult cinema or something like that. Mm, okay. So it's like a gay cult classic. Yeah. I think, you know what I mean? Especially at this point, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just that. It's it's a documentary style film, but mm-hmm. with some narrative elements and Arthur's uh, uh, t- retelling his kind of his story. Um, but it just kind of... He's remembering. He's remembering like, how it... He even mentions like, well, now 
um, I have to do this story and remember a bunch of stuff that society told yes. me I needed to forget in order to have this job in yes, the first place. Yes, I was like, when, yeah. When we see him in present day in 1984, he's, he's like regular guy, guy. Regular, regular guy. Mm. Where's the slacks? Where's the blazer? Did writes for the local paper. Yep. Um, Probably straight guy. Probably mm-hmm. like maybe has like date, dates women or something mm-hmm. at that point. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows how, how he's really feeling? Mm-hmm. But he just seems very unhappy. Very, very unhappy, dull. Uh-huh. Then that and that those parts of the film, like the colors, are just kind of yeah, like yeah, sapped yeah. out of him. You know, he's very in the gray, subway green. and even yeah. his clothes, like darker colors. Yep. And then all the other parts of the movie is like bright mm-hmm. and yellows and reds and greens. Yeah, when it goes back to 1974 mm-hmm. in London and such, uh, it's like that. how fun, so fun, mm-hmm. and it's that it's just very like youthful mm-hmm. very bright very like imagine free. spice girl like it's very spice girls yeah. but like you know what i mean like it's that london it's yeah. that uk like you know th- there's i i believe todd haynes has a background in music videos as well i'll have mm-hmm. to double check that double checked it and he doesn't have a background per se he is a music fan though he is a music fan and he's done music movies the people that were involved with the film uh I, michael stipe was also like a producer okay on on this stuff i think on the soundtrack in particular but, but or or on the film i believe like, yeah yeah but but it did have a good sense of what being in a music scene is like mm-hmm. like you see the same like how type he of people saw, around. Yeah, like you yes. would run into people and then it's just kind of like you remember people yeah, and then like, people oh, don't remember you. you. Yeah. And you're just like, I've seen you before. Uh, and yeah. Like, I know you, but I don't know you. Mm-hmm. And I know this and guy. And like, why do you look familiar? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Or just like, yeah, like, like that dude that we wa- ran into yesterday, like mm-hmm. Gus, like I, like, I'd known that, I'd known him forever. And there's been periods in my life when it's like, you know, it wasn't like that where I went to talk to him. It was like, he just seemed like, you know, mm-hmm. like, hey, what's up? Like, it's weird. It's yeah, weird yeah. like that as you get older, I guess. Like, when you, like, when I was 15, yeah. 14, like, just in bands, like, at shows, like, you're, he, like, when he's jamming out to his friend's band and stuff at, like, uh, when they're at that, re- at the mm-hmm. big show and stuff. And he's just like, ah, I remember that, like, being so into your fucking friend's bands and shit and, like, just wanting to be with it and yeah yeah like he's he has his little clothes that he's hiding from his family so it's very you know 70s mm-hmm. the british like very there's a bunch of conservative people around just conservative family life very repressive mm-hmm. um that's another thing todd haynes is exploring in this film like repression and like being who Shame you actually yeah and, uh-huh. being who you are being who you are and mm-hmm. and not like Brian Slade is that like Brian Slade is who Brian Slade becomes Mm -hmm. evolves into but when he's there he's there and he Mm -hmm. doesn't give a fuck about it he wears what he wants fucks who he wants Mm -hmm. like talks about it openly Mm -hmm. you know um man yeah that's real good I don't know (laughs) that's wild Uh, like uh Arthur's like tasked to tasked to remember because Arthur's uh, signed a story to to find out. Oh, whatever happened to Brian Brian Slade? Well, after he so Brian Slade, there's there's another. He's mimicking the when David Bowie killed off Ziggy Stardust mm-hmm. to move on from that that uh, uh, character mm-hmm. of his. Um, this one is taken in a more like kind of negative literal way where. Uh, people kind of like he wanted to fake his own death fake his like, own death so he could just get away mm-hmm. from and like I don't want to do this anymore and people have found out about this it's been a hoax and everybody like kind of shunned him for it things like that been mm-hmm. ostracized and such and Arthur's tasked to find out well whatever happened to that guy you know and there's those types of articles mm-hmm. and, and, and things. it was like a 10 years later mm-hmm. kind of thing 10 years later type of thing he's <laughs> recalling uh, he meets Tony Collette he recalls instances with her because she is actually um, uh, Brian Slade's wife mm-hmm. in the movie uh, what's her name? Mandy Mandy Mandy, Mandy Slade right? Mm-hmm. Mandy Slade yeah even though Slade's not really like right? the real the name, name. Mm-hmm. yeah they're not, real, not the real name Casey and I remembered a scene that we both love in the film it was the scene where Christian Bale as young Arthur is standing in front of the television looking at Brian Slade doing an interview and he's like, that's me, dad, that's me. 
Just wanted to say that. But Mandy Slade, they're married. They marry early. They they show when they meet. It's a very like, ooh, like whirlwind, like, and they fuck already. Like they're already like gonna do it at at the beginning of when they meet. Um, but he's already like, like he's already like a pretty androgynous, like, and, mm-hmm. and and pretty open with his sexuality throughout. Like it's not like, you know, as when when he evolves into like the Maxwell Demon character, mm-hmm. like. He's more out there, but he's never not who he is, I guess. I yeah, say. that's why when they said that the early, like, he, when he's living with the aunt at a, yes. at the uncle at an early age, like, he saw a bunch of shit that he shouldn't have seen. Yeah, and he sees an old, an old queen, an old drag queen in a blowjob. Um, very young age, very young age. I like that scene. That's that's one of yeah, our favorite he scenes. Did the, <laughs> he does a, an impersonation of uh, little, little Richard, Richard for his family, and yep. they're just like staring at him and don't know what to do. <laughs> With the big I like hair. that he's that the, the, the he sings the actual lyrics to the right. song too, not the whitewashed one. We're so also sidebar on that. We are going to do some rock talks. Uh, we've been talking about it. We're debating on whether to do... We're probably going to do a, a chunk of them as little monsters and a chunk of them as uh, Ko-Fi episodes mm-hmm. behind the paywall. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We love rock documentaries, and those are probably going to come up pretty soon. They're probably going to come up pretty soon. That's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, the little mm-hmm. Richard scene. That's one of my favorite scenes. Um, the whole spaceship thing at the beginning is crazy, like... Yeah, how it references, uh, like, uh, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, and, and, like, the little green jewel mm-hmm. kind of follows everybody around. Oscar Wilde's little green jewel ends up on Jack Ferry, and then it ends up in, with Brian Slade, eventually ending up with Kurt Wilde, eventually mm-hmm. ending up with Arthur mm-hmm. at the end. Um, yeah, and it's, like, it's just supposed to symbolize, I guess, like... The I don't know, like like the alien aspect of it, yeah. of like being out of this world, being out of this world, yeah, and mm-hmm. just like you're you're free now, this is yours, like mm-hmm. do with it what you will, like th- this is your gift, you know, and be free with it, and yeah, yeah, oh, that makes me like that's that's a nicer <laughs> that's a nicer end, I guess I don't know, like for me, like it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah yeah, and, and anyways, like it's just the 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 story goes back and forth. There's a whirlwind romance between. Brian Slade and Kurt Wilde um, with Tony Collette, like with Mandy, kind of just thrown in the mix and also kind of thrown to the side. Mm-hmm. Like she, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's fucking ride or die. She's ride or die for Brian Slade. She fights for him. She's there till what, how, as long as she can be there. Um, even after it, it, it all ends, she's still there. She shows up at that show and stuff and like reconciles with Kurt in mm-hmm. that moment too. Those those fucking Kurt Wilde performances I think are my favorite. Yeah, he does a good job. Yeah. Ewan McGregor, he's he does awesome. A cool job. Mm-hmm. He's, and it's like it could have been cheesy. It, it okay. So when he does TVI, mm-hmm. when he opens up and he's like, "Wow, that's more campy," and that's I'm like, "Uh," but as he progresses, hmm. it's like, "Oh yeah, that's fucking awesome." Like it's really good. Hmm. It's a real good performance. And then when he does that the song at the end. Awesome, like yeah. um, that. That's like, oh shit, that was mm-hmm. fucking good. Like watching it this last time, yeah, so good. Yeah, so good. Uh, let's talk about this soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this soundtrack. There's a lot about it and not enough about it on the internet. Hmm. Uh, very cool in that it's a bunch of like glam rock covers but also not some not covers there are some by the original glam like that were actually licensed for the album and stuff mm-hmm. which was cool uh, like i said bowie vetoed any sort of any sort of uh his music appearing in the in the movie so they went they did the best ne- the next best thing they fucking they they decided okay well we're going to write our own like david bowie esque songs uh, we're going to have our own David Bowie-esque uh, band. Uh, we're going to assemble a super group of fucking crazy, of, of amazing indie coming up, up and, card- up and coming Britpop and, and like maybe some Americans and such like that. So, uh, so there are a couple of like bands on here that are like bands for the album mm-hmm. that play songs by different glam rock bands. Uh, the Venus and Furs are Tom York, Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead. Johnny Greenwood. I said that. Mm-hmm. Huh? 
Tom York and Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead, which we're going to have to do some of their soundtracks. Yeah. We're totally going to have to do that. Uh, Craig Clune of David Gray's band, um, Suede's Bernard Butler, and Roxy Music's Andy McKay. Those were all in the Venus and Furs. At various points in time, they performed the songs. Um, when we go through the songs, I'll indicate who's singing what and mm-hmm. kind of what's doing what's doing who. Because Tom York and Jonathan Rhys Myers actually like kind of switch back and forth between the the Venus and Furs songs, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Because Jonathan Rhys Myers is like it is pretty rad in this. Like mm-hmm. his voice is pretty awesome. Like I'm, I'm, I I love it. Yeah. Um, and then so. The Wild Rats are the Americans that they chose for this. So, mm-hmm. so the Wild Rats are fucking uh, uh, Kurt Wilde's band. Um, uh, they were the Stooges' Ron Ashton, fucking mm. awesome. Stooges' Ron Ashton, Sonic Youth's Thurston Moore, mm. Steve Shelley, Mike Watt from the fucking Minutemen, who also ended up playing with the fucking Stooges later on. Mm. Uh, Gumball's Don Fleming and Mark Arm of fucking Mud Honey. That's which is super super cool. Um, also features new songs by Shudder to Think, which is a band that I was introduced to. I'll, we'll go through the songs and stuff. I'll talk about that. I also forgot to mention The Flaming Creatures, played by Brian Mulko and Stephen Hewitt from Placebo. And also from Placebo, uh, Stephen Alsdale, he played Polly Small's bassist. And Polly Small was played by Donna Matthews. Wait, yeah, Donna Matthews uh, uh, of... Uh, fucking elastica first opens up with brian eno's needle in the camel's eye (laughs) this is the scene that opens up the movie they're all going to the concert yeah they're all All running running and hurrying to try to get there and we're going black slide we're going crazy black slide and we're going not so demon it's more fiber it's more fiber album brian eno <laughs> this one's gonna be hard not to just fucking jam out to like cause I just wanna jam out to it I did jam out to it I had this on tape that Casey, tape got yeah. wore the fuck out <laughs> Brian Eno uh, okay so his full name Brian Peter George John Baptiste de la Salle Eno that's wow. crazy wow right? Yeah, he was born in 1948. Uh, he's also mononymously known as Eno. Uh, he was known as Eno when he was in Roxy Music. That was like his his. He evolved from that from glam rock. Here, this is his glam rock album. Um, I think this song comes out out on his album. Here come the warm jets. If I'm not mistaken, that's probably like his first solo pop album. Hmm. Um, then he starts. So so he start he he goes from like being like the glam like he's a member of glam, of Roxy Music he's like the key guy he's like a melody guy like uh, his solo albums very poppy they're super you know super intricate and integral into the glam rock uh, 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 ethos and stuff and then he makes this turn into like electronic music and minimalism and ambient music and then like he just becomes like the most amazing producer and has, <laughs> has produced the most amazing like he's produced Octum Baby by U2 he's had just the fucking albums by fucking David Bowie later on and like the, the most amazing producer in the world so um he's still doing his thing mm-hmm. at his at his age now like he's just fucking he just doesn't stop his protege is that dude Fred again okay yeah Fred again's a pr- protege of his and like Fred again's just like blowing up now like he's just making music and talks about him fondly and he's got his people out there doing his thing so Brian Eno Brian Eno <laughs> oh man boo 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 no 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 <laughs> the next song <laughs> The next song is the oh it's not the it's not the one that we are introduced to we're not introduced to Brian Slade with this song right No this is when he gets the he's looking at the magazine and he's listening to the album he just bought mm-hmm. like that's And then it's that music video-ish performance mm-hmm. that he does right that uh, the song is called Hot Ones and it's like it's like the single in the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is like, oh, this is the al- this is the song that everybody's buying the album for. Um, I, it might be the next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
We might see because it might, yeah, it might be that ballad of Maxwell Demon. Yeah, but we'll we'll see right now. But this no, no, it might be that other, it's the other song. I'll let you know. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, written by Shudder to Think. Shudder to Think uh, was on Discord Records, um, well, Washington DC based label. Uh, they're more like alternative rock and stuff. I learned of them from my friend Jim. Um, they were a big influence on like his music. Like he. He introduced me to like bands like Shudder to Think, um, but this is like them doing glam rock, mm-hmm. and it's like it's pretty timeless. Mm-hmm. It's got like a pretty funky like <laughs> very ballad. Mm-hmm. What is the what are the words? Do you remember the words? Like, do you remember? Do you know what they're talking about? What they're referencing? Like. I mean, I didn't. I hadn't dissected the song. I know. Yeah, it's because we were watching. It's. I was trying to do that while we were watching the fucking movie yesterday, and we saw the. We I mean, the, it's just references to yeah. like trying to sound like lyrics from. Mm-hmm. Other yeah, songs. that's true. Yeah, yeah. This is very good though, and that's they're they're formed out of like a more like post punk, post hardcore. So that like them doing this, it's great. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I think that's just super cool. Shudder to think. Uh, this isn't the last we'll hear of them. But the next band is covering a T-Rex song, a 20th Century Boy by T-Rex, covered by... Placebo. Placebo. Mm-hmm. Fucking Placebo. They, they show up in the movie. Yeah. They're in the movie. They're in the movie. Brian's for sure in the movie, Brian and I believe and the, the drummer. The, 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 the bassist. The bassist dude's in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was on the cast list. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Brian and the bassist. So that, or guitar, I mean, because you know how they switch guitar and bass? It's the tall guy. It's the, it's both the... The current, the one that's in the band now, the current yeah, yeah. one? He wasn't in the movie. He's in the movie. It says here. I don't, that's not true. None of those guys that were in the movie are him. Really? No, I feel like it was the former, watch, look at old pictures of Placebo. Their drummer is the drummer. It was Brian and the drummer. Huh. We're gonna have to find this out. But this fucking song is awesome. I mean, it's very perfect for Placebo to do. Placebo, rockin', rockin', rockin' band. Let's see, I don't know, Casey's figuring this out. Let's see. Hmm. Do you remember the old, like, original Placebo? Not Placebo Now. Yeah, Placebo yeah. Now is just them two. Yeah, yeah. This guy. But it says that that, it said that, that guy was in it. I don't, but I mean. But look at him. He's not in the movie. Which one was he? <sighs> like, which one was he? I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. None of them are him. I want to see if we can find a picture of them. Let me see. Two members of Placebo are in this movie. And we saw Placebo at Cruel World and we were like right in the front. I think we've already talked about this before, but it's always good to talk about it again. Um, Because like, did you cry throughout it when when they were playing? Of course. Yeah, huh. That was cool. That was awesome. They rocked. Oh man, that was a lot. Yeah. Next song is also by the Venus and Furs. It's called 2HB. This is the opening song. When the movie opens and they're showing all the, like, when the spaceships floating around, all that opening part is that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then this is when they show him. Uh And then at the end, Brian Ferry sings this song. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brian Ferry's and then that's when the, that's when They're those projections showing the tribute the yeah. death to glitter that's uh-huh. when he sings it and it's and it's at the end of it too though it's uh it's happening with um oh my gosh what am I trying to say at the end it's happening with like without drums and stuff right like it's like a, kind of like a more laid back performance yeah yeah at the end yeah uh this one's sang by Tom York mm-hmm. this one is a Tom York song which is it's like it, it goes to show me how how fucked up my brain is on this in that 
hearing it, I was like, oh, that's probably like the guy from Keen early on, or like any, somebody trying to sound like Tom York.、Hmm. I didn't think it was Tom York、hmm. until I read, oh, it's Tom York. You know what I mean? It was like another sound alike, but no, it's Tom York. And like, it's just wild. Like, they were at this time, what, like right around like, like the Benz area, like right after like Pablo. Well, well Pablo Honey was like, what, like 90, probably like 94. I mean, but it, I feel like he. Wasn't trying to sing as himself. No, he wasn't. Very much not. Yeah. yeah. But it still it still sounds like, like you still hear, like,、uh, like there's certain things、yeah. that he does, like、yeah. inflections on his voice.、Uh, very pretty song. Very Bowie in the saxophone、mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Like the soul saxophone, like going out there and like you're floating on it and stuff. Very David Bowie. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome song. This is a good, this is a good song.、Um, 2HB. Is originally. Let me pull that up. 2HB is originally a Rock, Roxy Music song.、Mm-hmm. 2HB is originally a Roxy Music song.、Uh, the next song is. Ewan McGregor. TVI, <laughs> played by Wild Rats, voiced by Ewan McGregor. The shit. TVI originally、uh, by the Stooges,、mm-hmm. Iggy Pop and the Stooges. And it's like, it's just pure energy, this song. Pure, and that's the thing I like about the Stooges. If you, it's, boom. it's very funky. It's not, it's, it's, it's straight enough, but it's very like, they still have like a funk to their, to their、mm-hmm. jamminess. It's and, it's, and it's still fast and punky.、Um, And very energetic and very abrasive. But, like this one, it's still funky. It's like, you know, like you can still feel like a, a thing. You can still do like the, the little 70s, like, you know, that thing. <laughs> I love this song. This is like my favorite. This, this, this one's your favorite? I don't know if it's my favorite Stooges song. Because、mm. I love I Want to Be Your Dog.、Mm-hmm. But I love this song. I don't know. What's your, what's your, did, you, did you say this is your favorite Stooges song? No. no? I mean, I, lo- I love this song, but no, it's not my favorite. No? Hmm. But yeah, uh, 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 Sang by Ian McGregor. This performance when he did it, like just、mm-hmm. out in that outdoor stage, and he's just like, he gets naked, you see、mm-hmm. his, little, his little dick. With the glitter.、Mm-hmm. You, see, you see some dick、mm-hmm. and some butts and some boobs, and you see all the things in this、mm-hmm. movie. It's great. The human body is amazing. Fuck yeah. Ooh. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. TBI. TBI by Wild Rats. The next song. It was also by Shudder to Think. It's the, the Ballad of Maxwell Demon. Yeah. And this was one of those Bowie esque songs. And it's got a very, it's got a very all the young dudes、mm-hmm. feel to it. Um, Brian、e- Eno's band was called Maxwell Demon.、Mm, okay. that's what, that's what, that was the reference to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it is. So, Shudder to Think, I want to say. Who are the members of Shudder to Think? Yep. Just like I, th- I thought, that, that's what I thought. Shudder to Think is,、uh, was fronted by the, the, this man, or was a man named Greg, Craig Redren.、Uh, does that name sound familiar to you?、Mm-hmm. From fucking、uh, Yellow Jackets. Hmm. He, did the, the, he did the Yellow Jackets theme and such. Yeah, and he does,、okay. like, he does film music and stuff now. Yeah, he's got solo material. Yeah. This、uh, little music video for this song、yeah. in the movie is、uh, my favorite. It's、so、awesome.、Fun. This is the one where he's like all glittered out, right? Yeah. Like he's that little where,、uh-huh. serpent. And then it's funny because as much as I've seen this movie, I didn't realize that that's the same makeup. At the end, when they show him going down the stairs and he's、yes. singing the tumbling down song,、yeah. he has the wig on. I didn't realize it's the same, same. makeup、cool. till yesterday. I didn't, I didn't ever realize it. That's cool. It's like, duh. That's cool.、Mm-hmm. Just calling back to it, you know?、Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like music video, but also like, like kind of dream world, you know?、Mm-hmm. Like, kind of like. This movie is a fever dream. Yeah. This movie is like just kind of everywhere, but it, it tells this. It pretty, to me, it's pretty cohesive, just as, as,、mm-hmm. a, as a tale of like 
you being absorbed in this world and the soundtrack just helps that even mm-hmm. much more you're yeah. just it just puts you in the world of velvet gold mine mm-hmm. um this this movie is very successful about that like i know i know that's a thing that movies try to do they try to put you in their world that's why their marketing is this that's why they have like this oh this bu- bucket of uh you have this alien bucket and it's in the world and oh you have this and you know what i mean but this does it like it doesn't try really hard. It just did two simple things, like mm-hmm. like documentary style movie and fucking amazing soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And like you're just like I'm just in every time I listen to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a musical. It's a musical. It's a musical. It's a musical. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Uh, Grantly Buffaloes, the whole shebang. Whoop. Grantly Buffaloes, the whole shebang. Grantly Buffalo. The whole shebang. Uh, Grantley Buffalo was a group led by Grantley Phillips in the 90s. Um, he launched a solo career. He's he's the town troubadour. Grant Lee Phillips is the town troubadour in Gilmore Girls. Did you ever see that? I never watched that. I never watched that either. Okay. Any Gilmore Girls fans out there? I didn't think I know so. Some people, I didn't. But oh yeah. I'm oh, okay. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I was like, anybody that listens? To, oh, I didn't think so. That's what <laughs> I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, Gr- Grandly Buffalo consisted of Grandly Phillips, Paul Kimball, and Joey Peters. Um, they were all previously in a band called Shiva Burlesque. They were L.A. alternative rock Americana. They were on Chrysalis Records. Um. They toured with like REM, Cranberries. So I guess like the Michael Stipe of this all would probably like you could. That's what it is. Like that's I'm like, how did they get in contact with all these people? Michael Stipe, REM, mm-hmm. fucking duh. Like all these people toured with REM. Radiohead opened up for REM. Fucking Sonic Youth opened up for REM. All these fucking bands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, duh, duh, Javi. There's that connection. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. So if you want like a badass soundtrack, get Michael Stipe to to fucking yeah. produce your soundtrack and shit. That's awesome. I do like this next song a lot. Lady Tron by the Venus and Furs. Lady Tron originally a song by Roxy Music. Roxy Music. This one's vocalized vocalized by Tom York. What do you think of this one? I love all of them. <laughs> when does this one play? When he meets uh, Mandy for the first time in the club. Yes, when he's meeting Mandy in the club. And he like sings it to her, huh? Yeah. Like I mean kinda like it's like it's like a little like a little montage a, a little, in the yeah, movie. A little musical moment where like they're actually singing but they're not singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And see, and those, see, sounds like this. That's Eno ish. That's Roxy Music, you know, like the openness back there and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's him doing that. I love that. I love that little breakdown, horn breakdown. That's cool. And it's cool that, like, the Venus and, like, the band went all out and, like, Super got into it. Oh, yeah, like yeah. the instrumentation, the song arrangements are real good. They, everything's pretty, pretty on it. Just different vocalists and stuff. And they're not like Tom York isn't like phoning it in. Like he's just doing something super different. Mm-hmm. That's cool shit. Yeah, they're acting too. They're acting too. Yeah. That was good. That's good. Next song. Is one of the more recent songs like Pulp, We Are the Boys. And this song, it's it's still like a 90s like rocker, like 90s Britpop rocker. Mm-hmm. But it, it still it still kind of fits in the mold of the movie. It's kind of just like I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. This one was like my one of my least, least favorites. Favorite? Mm. I just like Pulp, I guess. Pulp, Britpop band, fronted by Jarvis Cocker. Um, Jarvis Cocker, we previously talked about him when we talked about the... Uh, oh my gosh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Hmm. Yeah, you should check that episode out. Fantastic Mr. Fox with my friend Norman. Um, we talk about it. It's a cute little boy movie. And Norman's a cute little boy. I mean, not literally. <laughs> but fucking, like... 
<laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like a cute little boy movie. It's like a buckskin cap and like, like the soundtrack's very like like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're very like, like I'm gonna I'm gonna go Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed, my shit. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Johnny Appleseed my shit. But Paul Driver's car. Yeah, good band. This song super energetic, but also not Casey's <clears throat> favorite. Not Casey's favorite. Not the best song on the album, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. really not. Even and that's it's not the worst song. Not the best song though. Not the best song. Um, next song is by Roxy Music. It's performed by Roxy Music. It's called Virginia Plain. I don't even know if even I don't even know if I went into any detail about Roxy Music. I wonder if I've talked about Roxy Music on the show. I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> their their music's very rockin' and very glam, but also very baroque. Like mm-hmm. it goes in different ways. It's not super linear. Like it's still like there's a lot happening, whatever, but it's not abrasive. It's still very yeah. soft and bouncy. Yes. Yeah, it's very like regal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Roxy Music were an English rock band formed in 1970 by lead uh, vocalist and principal songwriter Brian Ferry and Graham and bassist Graham Simpson. Uh, they were joined by oboist Andy McKay, guitarist Phil Manzanera, drummer Paul Thompson, and synthesizer player Brian Eno. Uh, Eno just developed like if there's this documentary on Eno that's like three hours long or two and a half it's very long and very slow very BBC mm-hmm. oh my but it, it was like a slog to run through but they they like put you in that like he was like Brian Eno was such an, a, a thing he mm-hmm. was such a mystery like his appearance he was like the weird one in the band and mm-hmm. like he had the long hair and he's bald now but he was like super long hair and he was like creepy in the back touching his synthesizers mm. um he was just such a thing it was just it was inevitable for him to become his own person uh but yeah there was like so much so much of a of a hype around Eno oh that's Eno oh Eno that's how that soundtrack I mean that that documentary sounded all right that's a good song next song is a song called personality crisis this one this personality crisis is performed by uh oh what's the name oh my gosh probably small that's what i remember reading so 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 teenage fan club and donna matthews teenage fan club and donna matthews donna matthews was the uh singer of elastica another brit pop band uh, so where did that come from where did i read that i don't um, know well personality crisis is a new york dolls cover i don't know if that's it was hmm. originally written by david johansson and johnny thunders johnny thunders there's a good rock doc on i i there's a i learned a bunch of johnny thunders covers a while back i love I, I mean, I love New York, New York Dolls. Hmm. New York Dolls is a Jimmy and Me band. Yeah. That's a Jimmy and Me band. Yeah. Teenage Fan Club, otherwise. A Scottish alternative rock band formed in Glasgow in 1989. Founded by Norman Blake, Raymond McGinley, and Gerard Love. All of whom shared the vocals and songwriting duties. Um, are they still going? Yeah, they're still going. Teenage Fan Club. They're around. They released a number of albums. They released... Okay, so as of 2023, they've released 12 studio albums and two compilation albums. All right, Teenage Fan Club. All right. What do you think about this song? Personality Yeah, this one was my least favorite. This one, this one was your least favorite? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, okay, cool. Next song is one of our most favorites. That's okay. That's what it was. It's because she was playing. It's because you talked about what bands all of them were playing, uh-huh. but this one you didn't. What were they playing? She's the band supposed to be called Polly Small. She's supposed to be oh. playing called Polly, Polly Small. Small. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's Polly I was like, Small. I know I saw that somewhere, and I remember like, um, back like when I first re- heard about the movie. That's what I remember. Reading. Okay. Okay. Polly Small. Polly Small. The next song we've actually talked about on the show before, 
on the first episode of the show. Go back and check that out. Uh, we talk about Train Spotting. Oh, we talk about two people. So, so Satellite of Love comes out in the Train Spotting soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, but Satellite of Love, perfect song. It's a perfect song. I don't know. I just I like that scene where they're riding in the little um, on the spaceships and they're singing and they're singing it to each mm-hmm. other. Yeah, and it's a very romantic scene between Ewan and and Jonathan Rhys Meyers and. They're singing it back and forth to each other, doing the bum, bum, bum. See, that's what it was. What was it? What happened? In March of 1997, Placebo Band began a nine-week shoot for Todd Haynes' film Velvet Goldmine. Brian and Steve joined the make-believe glam band The Flaming Creatures. Yes. Stefan joined Polly Small's band, a.k.a. Donna Matthews. Oh, okay. The band joined okay. together to perform T-Rex's 20th Century Boy. Okay, okay, cool. So we are all right. Both of us are right. Thanks for clearing that up, love. Thanks for clearing yeah, it up was, on my microphone. I needed to know. Because, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's like a blink and you'll miss some type of thing, but... But it's also prominent in that, like, the bands are the thing. Like, the bands mm-hmm. are the thing in this movie. And, like, the bands are, like, what everybody longs for. And, like, we we kind of take, like, we are the fan in the movie. We mm-hmm. are, like, it's as if we're the fan watching a documentary about our favorite, our yeah, favorite artist. Yeah, pretty much. But so- Satellite of Love by Lou Reed. I love this song. Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. Um, ballad piano. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, next song is T Rex's. T Rex. Oh my gosh. Next song is T Rex's Diamond Meadows. I like Diamond Meadows. But it's also not my favorite T Rex song. No, yay! That's just funny. And it's just the Barbie scene. That's how I always remember this oh, song. Oh, that's what this is. Scene. This is the Barbie scene. This is the. So, Barbies. Uh, in in this movie, Todd Haynes uses the Barbies and children's voices to convey like the first time that they actually like communicated that they loved each other, mm-hmm. and like that's when uh, uh, um, Kurt's like, "You don't have to say, you don't have to say, mm-hmm. I know it." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just it's such a like it was so awesome of him to do that like super gay love scene mm-hmm. in the nineties. Yeah. In, in Clinton 90s, don't ask, don't tell 90s, right? Fucking, and like, he's making two children mm-hmm. do, like, act out gay love in Barbie. Barbies. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's I love that shit. I love it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Paul Kimball and Andy McKay. Bitter's End. Mm-hmm. It, they're in the they're that's them performing yeah. it yeah um but like i said like we said earlier paul kimball was previously in that uh band with fucking grantley buffalo okay. he was in grantley buffalo and then andy mckay was uh in roxy music okay so they joined together to create this song bitter's end it's a weird tune it's a it's like a cabaret song mm-hmm. like a dun, like a barbershop a barbershop cabaret well, like, I don't bum, know bum, 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 with like weird like um wow fuck it's not it's like like I, I don't I'm trying to think of what the instrument's called I want to say kazoo but I know that's not right no just- <laughs> they're like it it's like it it has that a like that and yeah. like it has that effect and it's like a thing. Mm-hmm. It's like a thing that you whack. Yeah. And it'll do like <laughs> it's like a it does, but it's like it it's it looks fucking weird. Mm-hmm. But it's that. Mm-hmm. It's piano. And it's sinking like this. And that's the thing about glam rock too. Super campy, super theatrical. Mm-hmm. That was it. That's what it was. Drag. Super it was dra- drag. Drag. Mm-hmm. Drag. Drag. Mm-hmm. It was super drag. Holy shit! I didn't even make, I did not even make mm-hmm. that connection. Oh shit, that's crazy. Did not make that connection until now. Mm-hmm. Wow. This fucking song. <laughs> the best song. That's next. Our favorite song on the album. The best song that... Well... <sighs> is it? Is it the best song that Eno's ever done? 
na 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 Baby's on fire. Baby's on fire by the Venus and Furs. This was sung by um, Jonathan Rhys Myers. Mm-hmm. Um, super fucking. And also, so Jonathan Rhys Myers does su- do some of the vocals on the Shudder to Think songs mm-hmm. in the uh, on the on in the, the film. film on film mm-hmm. on film. He does do some of those vocals. It's a Queen of the Dam situation we mm-hmm. have there. That's it was that type of situation there. But this is an awesome cover. Mm-hmm. It's an awesome cover. I think this is Eno's best song, honestly. Yeah, Baby's on Fire. I mean, it's the song that everybody knows, but it is it is my favorite Eno song. It's a good song. Very sexy song. It's it is on it like a pretty intense time in the movie too. Yeah, when that orgy's going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they're having intense. that like on stage, the scene of the performing. This is why I what made me was like. It is about them, just because I remember seeing uh, pictures of, is it Mick Ronson? Yes. Um, playing his guitar and yes. David Bowie kind of like um, like fellatioing the guitar while he's yes. playing. And that's that's the scene in the movie mm-hmm. between Kurt Wilde and Brian Slade. Yeah, they recreate that. Yeah, you're right. They recreated that mm-hmm. like like. Uh, uh, Kurt Wilde comes out on stage with a guitar like he's getting to play and he's doing shit and mm-hmm. yeah they recreate that's cool that's a cool scene mm-hmm. yeah Casey pointed that out to me I was like oh yeah mm-hmm. I, n- I don't think I noticed that and then those that. silver pants that right. uh, Kurt Wilde wears yeah. in the film I'm like Iggy Pop yep. those were signature Iggy he looks awesome he mm-hmm. like they made them look so good mm-hmm. they made them look so cool I was like how fun to have been mm-hmm. the the makeup artist or the hairstylist yes. or the wardrobe did how you fun. see who did that I didn't look who did. Let's they just, see. While you pull that up, I will pull up the next song. Uh, but Baby's on Fire, it's it's the fucking jam. It's like, you could have sex to it. You could fucking ride your bike to it. You could learn how to play it and like jam out to it. It's a good song. It's a good song. Um, next song is also the Venus in Furs playing a song called Bittersweet. Bittersweet. So this one is sung by Tom York. Uh, it was a Roxy Music song, uh, originally written by by uh, Andy McKay and Brian Ferry. So, Sandy Powell. Sandy Powell was the the, the um, costume designer. Mm-hmm. Cool. What was this song? When did this song come out? The song comes out when. Um, He's singing like he's in the studio after he already told Kurt like you're like this is we're done. Oh, and he storms out and whatever. This is the song that's playing. This is this. Oh, okay, okay. But this one's very much a Tom York like Mm -hmm. reaching into into his chest and pulling out his heart. Mm -hmm. This is a cool song. Oh, this is a good song. Very ballad, very rockin', but like slow ballad rockin', but that minor tone. That's cool. This Rocks I'm reading more about pianos. the. What happened? I was reading more about the costumes. Okay, and then what, what happened? That the key costumes were designed by Powell and built by costume rental house Angels, a '70s era streetwear, oh. mostly vintage. Um, um, but seventies era streetwear uh, was sourced from flea markets. So like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. There you go, flea markets, thrift stores. I mean, you never fucking know. The next song is a Carter Burrell song. Carter Burrell uh, did like the score music and stuff on here. Did, did uh, but also Carter Burrell. I mean, we've talked about Carter before when we talked about. Twilight, I believe, uh, but also did the score for Carol, another Todd Haynes film. Mm-hmm. Did the score for oh shit for Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, and The Banshees of Inisherin. Oh, so he's been fucking receiving fucking awards recently, Academy Awards. Wow, he's also done work for Bill Condon. Well, Bill Condon was the Twilight movies. Uh, he did he did uh, music on Spike Jones movies. Oh wow. 
This is a cool song. It's called Velvet Space Time by Carter Burwell. And it is very, like, out there, but it's still, like, 70s psychedelic. Mm Mm-hmm. Done with, like, yeah, there's, like, piano and, like, I don't know, everything, every, it, it's not super overly synthesized or anything like that. Mm-mm. It's very, like, space, it's space time, like this, we're, tra- we're holding each other's hands on the rings of time Saturn. Travel. And we're traveling through time. Hey, come back in time with me, love. It's getting so windy. The wind time. is getting crazy. Yeah. The wind is getting crazy out there. Ricardo Burrell, fucking awesome. I'm sure this is not the last time we're gonna talk about his music. Mm-hmm. Um, might do a little. I might do like a little profile on him. I, I should probably do some profile episodes on some of these dudes. Next song, "Tumbling Down," the Venus and Furs. This is the like kind of like the farewell mm-hmm. Maxwell Demon Brian Slade song. Yeah. Of of the film itself. This. Is a Cockney Rebel sound, uh, uh, cover. Um, I don't know much about Cockney Rebel, and I couldn't find much about Cockney Rebel. Um, just know Cockney Rebel, 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 glam rock, 70s, British. This is a good song. And uh, Jonathan Rhys Meyers sings dun, this one too. And yeah, Jonathan Rhys Meyers is singing on this. Dun, dun, na, na. Dun, na, na, na. Oh. oh, okay, cool. Okay, so Steve Harley and Harley and Cro- Cockney Rebel, Rebel were an English rock band who formed in early 1970s London. They mu- their music covered a range of styles from pop to progressive. Okay. Da, 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 na, 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 na. Yeah, this is very beautiful. Da, This is like the we're going au revoir. We will see you later. Glam rock, glam rock was here, but it's it's only a fleeting thing. We love you. It's that kind of mo- that kind of song. The the music video at the end too, like it's very grandiose. Mm-hmm. It's like the last like kind of huge set piece of the movie. Um, yeah, everything kind of like just leads up to that like big dream sequence music video moment where he's in that makeup and he has the hair on mm-hmm. this time and he's in this like the staircase and going up and down. And it's and, all the glitter yeah. and he's floating down in the mm-hmm. um, chandelier. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this song like just brings it all together. It does make you want to like, it's very mm-hmm. emotional. It makes you want to like, oh, like mm-hmm. what have happened to him? I mean, of course, we find out that that uh, Brian Slade literally turned into somebody else. Mm-hmm. Literally turned into Tommy Stone. Tommy Stone, we kind of see him throughout the movie here and there. Um, the he Tommy Stone is like the like kind of like not the thin white Duke era of of Bowie, but like the more like like. 80s pop yeah, Bowie, like, uh-huh. like the the young Americans Bowie. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's he's that version of Bowie. Mm-hmm. Um, and like in this, it's I don't know, like I don't know what this is supposed to portray of that. Like like Tommy Stone doesn't like it. He's supposed to be Brian Slate, mm-hmm. right? But then is it like it's like is he like oh well I'm like straight pop guy now like you know like am I I'm going back to repressing myself I think my, he just wanted to get once? away from all of it because him and um, him and Kurt Wilde weren't yeah. together anymore and like he just wanted to, to like start over you uh-huh. know? okay yeah because I was wondering because like it's also like the time like I know the timing of course it makes sense to like do the ten years seventy four to eighty four but also eighty four eighty four is like the Reagan eighties you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's like the conservatism of the time mm-hmm. and like the tightening up of this and that yeah. so and of course like I'm sure Todd Haynes was very much like in that yeah, wo- like you know aware. there aware of what was happening but I love all the like the the opening sequence the lettering like the just all the fonts yes, and everything the fonts, for the movie especially the at the titles. end the changes yes. of the colors 
Like while they're bringing up this the cast list and so all the "Make Me Smile" by by Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel is the uh, is the outro song. Mm-hmm. It's the song that plays over the credits, and yeah, the credits are sick. Yeah, it's just like stars and shapes and like different colors popping out at you. Yeah, and yeah, I love was it. Cool. It's fun. The the fonts were cool. The color, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. super cool. The way that they designed like the 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 card like the title cards when it was like the bands and like the songs and stuff mm-hmm. was different too like they arranged differently but this song's super, super cool oh, very poppin very you know all right cruising let's cruise in la that type of song yeah i like the song it's a good song to send out the movie with good song to send out the movie with i mean i'm not gonna lie I might cut this out, but when we watch Hedwig and we cover it, mm-hmm. I think I think we're gonna feel a lot of the same emotions. You know what I mean? I, I think For it's sure. I think it's like not the same movie, but almost the same movie. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like the rise and fall. The rise and fall. Yeah. La 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 la. la. Ah, I love this. I love that we covered this. Me too. Yeah. Casey's favorite movie of all time, Yay, Velvet Goldmine. Finally, Velvet Goldmine. I'm so glad that we Only covered took, this. Only took what 60 something episodes? This is the 60th episode. <gasps> Woo! That's also why this is the 60th episode. Cool. Yeah, 60th there you episode. Go. Velvet Goldmine, Todd mm-hmm. Haynes. If um, you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, do yourself a do favor, yourself a favor and watch it. I will lend you my DVD. Be gay as fuck. Just watch it. It's fun. Watch it. I've, if you um, if you grew up during that time period, like yes. you have to have loved like all the glam rock, yes. all the platform shoes, all the bell bottoms, all the different colored little cherry buttons on your yes. shirt. Like so cute. So Todd Haynes also directed May December, which we recently watched. Mm-hmm. Also, that movie was fucking rad. That mm-hmm. was that was a wild movie. Um, and just so slightly different. funny, mm-hmm. slightly funny. Yeah, yeah like, I like how he has to throw in the comedy. The comedy, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Carol, also an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. I hear Dark Waters is a cool movie. We should see that. Mm-hmm. That's got Ewan in it, and it's more like I think it's more actiony that one. Which what Dark Waters? Todd Dark Waters. Look at Todd, Todd Haynes. Dark Waters. Look it up. Um, but he's also most famously known for Safe, which was it, Julianne Moore is like kind of his muse. Mm-hmm. Like she's been in multiple movies of his, and she it's like that's that's his guy. Yeah, Julianne Moore is the his guy. The one with Mark Ruffalo. Dark Waters. It has. Let me check it out. Yeah, Mark Waff- Waffalo. Oh, and I Bill thought- Pullman and Anne Hathaway. Oh no, that's not. No, no, sorry. I, I didn't. I thought that was a uh, I saw. I thought it was Ewan in the thing. Was no, like- it was Mark Ruffalo. But I hear, no, I read that that was good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I just want to see more Todd Haynes movies. Like, he's a guy that I, I like, what I've seen of his, been good. Mm-hmm. I want to see everything. I want to mm-hmm. be the completest on it. Yeah, yeah, Todd Haynes. Um, Velvet Coleman, I, I mean, any last, any last words before we send it off, love? This is yours. No, yeah, this just watch the say. movie. It's so good. Like I've seen, I can see it anytime. I will never refuse to watch it. The music brings back so many like fond memories of being a kid and stuff. But it's it's just a fun movie. I love it. I love it too. And I'm so glad we did it. And I love you. I love you. Next time, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. One of our both mutual favorite movies. Even more gay. Even so Even much more gay. more gay. So much more gay. Buckle up. Buckle up, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know, like, this, This, you know, there's a lot of... I think we're getting the gay out of the way, I guess, for, like, at the, at the beginning of this all. But, you know, like, these well, musicals, like... getting it out of the way. Yeah, it's we're gonna never be getting in there. Yeah, it's gonna be We're just there. gonna shove it down your throats. We're gonna shove no, it no, down no. your throats. It is what it is. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. You could check us out on Instagram at Monosterio Video, www.jjcaballero.com. Our Ko-Fi page, our uh, ko-fi.com backslash Monosterio Video. I will include the links in the show notes and such, the description of the show. Um, I'm going to include links to uh, help the people protesting or who have protested for Palestine, help the people of Palestine. It's... It's wild out there. It's it, it's wild. It's it's very disappointing and, mm-hmm. and you know distressing. Um, 
still including those links and still not forgetting them still not forgetting them uh also you can find us on instagram casey deep cuts underscore ep you can find me j underscore jjcabalro um anything else to plug i'm trying to think did uh, did i forget anything new music i got new music coming out i got new music out um deep cuts uh, we have a new logo for for, yeah. for the shop. New logo. New logo means Thanks to Jimmy. We're probably gonna do new stuff with it, so mm-hmm. be on the lookout for that. Uh, next episode in a week, and be on the lookout on a Ko-Fi page because I'm going to also update all that stuff. Um, thank you very much, and we will listen to you later. <laughs>